Samsung has been known to give pretty good performing camera phones regardless of what price segment they cater to. But now with the launch of the M series of smartphones, they're pricing their phones more aggressively than ever. That brings up a very interesting question. Have they cut corners to get the pricing right, especially camera wise? Let's find out. This is Sandeep from Rev Atlas and here's the camera review of the M20. This video is brought to you by Zest Money. Visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to buy your favorite smartphone. It's an entirely digital process with high approval rates, seamless EMI payments and even zero pre-closure charges. But the best part of all is the 0% interest on most merchants and you don't even need a credit card or a credit score either. The primary camera on the M20 is a 13 megapixel 1x2.8 inch sensor with f1.9 aperture and 1.12 micron pixel size. The secondary camera is a 5 megapixel f2.2 sensor with ultra wide field of view and 1.12 micron pixel size, but get this, a 1x6 inch sensor. That's probably one of the tiniest camera sensors I've seen on a phone in recent times, front camera or back, budget or flagship. Anyway, hardware aside, let's see how the images are. The camera is quick to focus and in case you don't focus beforehand, it makes sure to do so before capturing the image. Colors are quite natural looking which is a good thing unlike some of the older Samsung phones. Details are mushy and sharpness is also drowned out due to the aggressive noise reduction. Dynamic range is pretty decent, but HDR mode only ever so slightly bumps up the saturation and also increases the contrast weirdly but hardly does anything else. No tangible difference in dynamic range really, but we'd suggest leaving it on or keeping it in auto which is the default mode, especially since HDR mode is quite difficult to access and is hidden in the settings. The only saving grace for the rear camera is the ability to focus pretty up close and get decent macros. Although the ant's expression truly paints a picture about how I'm feeling about the phone's camera so far. Coming to the wide angle camera, the field of view offered by the ultra wide camera is quite a bit wider than the regular one. It's a fixed focus camera so it's best used for scenery, architecture etc. However, it's plagued by color issues. It doesn't get the right color temperature or tone most of the time and the result you get will depend on your luck. There's a live focus mode which is basically the portrait mode. It makes use of the ultra wide camera for depth sensing and it's pretty horrible to be honest. The camera is trying desperately to give Amrit an afro. Sharpness also reduces further from the already low amount it had to start off with. Low light images aren't too noisy but that's because of two things. Number one, the camera chooses a low ISO and secondly, extremely high noise reduction is being applied. The first seems like a good thing but the trade-off is a very slow shutter speed which coupled with the lack of stabilization gives you shaky images almost always. This is in respect to the primary camera. If you talk about the ultra wide camera then the same findings get magnified. I did blur out the number plate on the regular camera in order to protect the privacy of the owner of the car but in the ultra wide image this is exactly how it is. It does the blurring for you I guess, but the lack of detail is really really shocking. The front facing camera is an 8 megapixel unit with f2 aperture. Images shot with the front camera have good color and white balancing. The details are again drowned out and even with the beauty turned all the way down, there's certain softness to the images and some whitening happening as well. The HDR mode here helps more than it does with the rear camera but then again the difference is mainly evidenced in highlights and doesn't make it a whole lot better. Live focus or portrait mode here too is pretty horrible. The halo non-blurred region comes here too on what is perhaps the easiest subject to get the edge detection right. A ball head is definitely easier to detect edges than that on a messy head of hair. You get the same halo missed out non-blurred portion even in group selfies. The M20 can capture 1080p videos with both the front and rear cameras but there's no EIS on either side and that results in shaky videos. Rear camera videos are good in terms of detail and the overall look and feel. Colors are natural and there's fairly decent amount of detail resolved as well. You can do digital zoom while shooting with the regular camera but there's no way to switch back and forth between the cameras while recording. The wide angle camera doesn't allow zooming in or out either. The front camera video is similar too in terms of performance and we hope that there's an update that brings EIS at least for the primary camera at the back. So this is the front facing camera on the Samsung M20 capturing full HD video. Let me know what you guys think about the overall sharpness, the dynamic range, the detailing and how well it's become my voice in this particular scenario. I hate to say this but this isn't something that I expected from a Samsung device. There isn't any aspect of the smartphone's camera on the M20 that I would say beats the competition or even is at par. Most of it is poor performance. Software updates could help it a bit but I think the problem lies with the hardware as well. I'm quite liking the phone so far other than the cameras but the imaging setup is truly horrible. I wouldn't recommend this phone to anyone who wants to take half decent photos or videos. 
Thanks for watching this video. See you again in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to purchase your dream products, be it a smartphone, electronics, furniture, and more across Flipkart, Amazon, and more than 100 other partners.